Willie, the guys have been asking everyone else that we've interviewed this afternoon, and they didn't do it with you, but they've been asking what they had for breakfast this morning, and I'm getting to think it's a bit of a Piper's thing. What did you have for your breakfast this morning? Nothing. See, there you go. That's, Cup of tea. Everybody we've spoken to hasn't eaten any breakfast this morning. Is it a new tradition in the piping world? No, I've never been a big breakfast eater at home, really. No? Unless I've got the day to myself, and then I'll make a late one. But usually rushing out the door, it's a cup of tea. Is all I've got time for. What about so when you're away doing schools and things and there's, that, there's that kind of atmosphere when you're a hotel or a, or a school and everybody's eating breakfast in the morning, would you do that? Breakfast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but just because I've got, I'm there, um, I suppose, and it's getting made anyway. And do your eating habits change on the day of a, of, of a competition? Um, I, don't try, I try not to eat too much and certain things that I, I think might affect me, you know. Will you look at your Will you look at your draw tomorrow, and will that impact when you'll have lunch or coffee or anything like that? Yeah, it will. Um, yeah, depending on where I am on on the Peabrook, if it's before lunch, then I'll have a lunch. Depending on how long it is before the MSR. Right. Just I, I don't like to have too much. Leaves you tired as well in the day of competition. You're nervous anyway, so you lose a use up a lot of nervous energy. But you've really that situation where you don't want to be tired, you know, because you don't want to be tired and then try and get yourself G'd up to play. Have we talked to the, some of the other guys about that? The, 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 we've talked before about the fact that there's a huge mental effort involved in something, whether it's the Glenfiddich or any other major competition, there's a lot of mental energy involved in the, the preparation with the tunes and stuff. But playing the bagpipe for the length of time that you need to play it tomorrow, is there, is there a lot of physical energy involved as well? I would say that the physical side is really what you practice for. So, you, you know, you're practicing your stamina as well as your music and, you know, keeping your bagpipe tipped up. So you, you would be, you'd be hopeful not to be running out of steam. How long would you practice for in a normal day to make sure that, that you won't run out of steam tomorrow? Um, probably 45 to 50 minutes right. maximum. And it's... Uh, you know, if I feel if I, if I do that, I'm in reasonable shape. If if usually the weekend before a, a big competition, I'll maybe do an extra half hour as a separate slot, um, and then I, I, I'm, I'm fine, usually. And is that 45 minutes solid blowing of the pipes, or will you stop within that and start again? And um, only if there's something wrong with the pipes. Right. Uh, if the pipes are going fine, it's, it's like full on the whole time. You know, don't stop. No. And are you a footerer with the pipes? Or do, you, do, do you stop and, and play with them or are you quite happy that once you've got them going you'll just keep going? If the drones are settled I, would, I wouldn't mess about. Sometimes, you know, if maybe there's a note that's a wee bit out, flat or sharp, I'll just maybe leave it to the end and then adjust at the end. Uh, because sometimes you can footer about too much early on and if you move tape, on a, on a note, you end up moving it back mm -hmm. to where it was originally, normally. So I, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in allowing the pipe to warm up and get the moisture in and, and you know, allow it to get to where it's, you want it to be. And, and do you, have you, are you feeling now that, that things are almost kind of back to normal this year with, in terms of restrictions having disappeared with, with COVID? And has the pipe had a chance to get the way you want it to be this year? I think the pipe didn't really suffer too much. I felt that, that, you know, I was still playing away and I was still trying to keep the instrument in good in good shape. Um, I suppose it's just, it seems so back to normal because I've I found a mask in my pipe box and I went, <laughs> what did he use that for? <laughs> it was like, I've got out of the way of doing that now, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, it, very quickly we get back to normal. It, it's amazing. In the last couple of years we've had COVID protocols and having to tune in certain tuning rooms, and, uh, you know, instead of hopefully getting our favourite tuning room and uh, things like that. So, yeah, it does feel the whole season that there's been a normality, which is great. Did you find it quite easy to, to, to practice when there were no competitions to practice for? I, I tried to be committed to doing it, you know, and, and I did have weeks where I would be firing on, onto the pipes and playing quite a bit and getting my... my myself to a, a reasonable level and then and then then there was the, the, the nagging doubt that I don't know when I'm going to actually use all of this good for him so you would kind of slide back a wee bit and maybe 
we know when you're at home a lot, maybe the Netflix would take over from the from the practice in the pipes. But yeah, I just tried to keep it just ticking along because I didn't want it to be in a situation where um, I wasn't really on form. I, I did find it when, when the first Glen Fiddick in the lockdown period came on, um, I found it quite challenging to get up to speed with it I did, because I, had, I hadn't competed for for a, a, it would have been a, almost a year mm -hmm. and I, I don't think I'd ever not competed for that length of time for like 40 years you know so yeah 40 more than 40 yeah. years probably so yeah. when you practice with having to practice for was there almost a fear that you might peak too soon a, a wee bit because I think that's what it's all about you know there's no point in playing brilliantly two weeks before the contest and then you've got nothing left in the tank so you try to get the top form coinciding with the, with the competition. So can you almost be in a situation where you're practising too much and you're getting ready too early? You know, there's a fear sometimes when it's going really well <laughs> and, and say a week or ten days before the contest and you're, you're thinking the pipes are going really well and then, you know, most pipers will go, I don't know what's going to go wrong now, you know, but you just try to kind of ride that and just kind of keep the pipe taking over, you know, yeah. and, and I think that that's the fear that you're they're going well too early and you're playing well too early. So um, I think most pipers that I know would would always go to a contest and say, I wish I had another week. So I think that's a good place to be because you, yeah. you feel, you know, you're, you're not over-practised, you know. The tunes that you're playing tomorrow, when you get your tunes, when you get the tunes tonight from the ones that you've put together as your, your kind of long list for, 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 for the competition, once you know tonight which ones you're playing tomorrow, when's the last time you'll actually play them before you go on the platform tomorrow? Uh, I'm probably in the tuning up process. Maybe not play them fully or not, you know, like maybe not the whole pea brick at one time. I'll play bits and pieces that I, I think I need just to settle on. Yeah. With the match just being real, it'll just be having a little run through, you know, a bit, a bit here and a bit there. Not the full match just being real. Yeah. But, uh, um, you hope that you've done the reps and the tunes and you're comfortable with them. So I think it's just really getting your in, yourself mentally prepared, really, to go yeah. in there and, and play the stuff. You talked about finding a mask in your pipe case. We've been asking everyone if there's anything that they, that they need to make sure is in their pipe case before they, they, they leave here tomorrow and go to the, the, the castle. Have you got any superstitions or anything that you need to look twice and make sure it's there before you go? Um... No, not really, just a, a check that everything's in there. I mean, obviously you don't want to turn up at the castle and the chanter's lying in the hotel room, stuff like that, but but um, not really. I mean, I've got, I've always got spares for everything. You know, spare chanters, spare drone reeds, a whole lot. You hope you never have, ever have to look for them. And, and the, the case is probably much heavier than it needs to be, but, um, you know... God forbid something goes wrong and then you have to be scrambling about for a read or something like that. So yeah. you hope that's not going to happen. But uh, yeah, I think I think that's about it. And um, just making sure I've got some talc for my for the sweaty hands when you get up on the stage. And then looking forward to a, a, a few beers with some pals you haven't seen for a while at the Kelly tomorrow night. Yeah, the Kelly's Kelly's always a good a good night. You know, there's there's you know everybody's got different reflections in the day. Sometimes you know it's it, it, you've had a good day. Sometimes you've had a not so good day, and and you just you know by that time it's too late to worry about it anyway. So uh, we're all kind of in the same boat the, the the guys that have been playing up there, and so we we all appreciate how it is how hard it is to get up there. I mean, even though you've done it a few times, it, it's still not any easier, you know. So, do you spend yeah. a lot of time, do you spend time at the Cayley with, or not just at the Cayley, but after the day, do you spend time with your fellow competitors analysing performance and talking about what you've done and how what, what you could have done? Or? Um, I don't think we really do a lot of that. People always ask you, how did it go? And sometimes you're quite happy and... You know, you just want to say, "Well, I was happy." That's if you're if you're reasonably happy, then you, you then you think you've done a decent job. But sometimes you go, "Oh well, I didn't like this, I didn't like that." But you're, we're usually quite honest with each other. And there's there's no there's no bluffing really. You know, we we all need know each other too well for that. You know. Yeah.
Willie, thanks very much for taking some time to talk to us. I know that, that there's a lot of preparation still to be done for tomorrow, so quite night tonight and have a good day tomorrow. Quite night. Thank you very much. Cheers.